hallowed candidates. Uh, we are once uh, more back on a doll's house. Uh, we had agreed that we want to look at as many says uh, questions as possible and uh, uh, try the much we can uh, to answer them to the best of our knowledge. Now we want to look at, uh, that's why our topic is uh, essay writing on adults house by Henrik Ibsen and this is uh, particularly English uh, though it is uh, tackling the area of uh, paper 3 and that is what essay writing uh, is all about. Now uh, we want to look at a sample question uh, once more and the question uh, is, uh, women are an embodiment of sacrifice. Now I want us to remember that uh, the testing of um, the compulsory set text and essay writings for that matter will oscillate between two areas. That is the vices and uh, the virtues. This is one of the questions that uh, targets uh, the virtues uh, in a law's house. And therefore, women are an embodiment of sacrifice. And that is the end of the statement. Use adults' house for your illustrations. Now, once you have a question like that, our interest is to look at uh, the key words or phrases in the question that are key, that are pointing to the interpretation of the question. And one of the uh, key words is the fact that we are told that they are women. So uh, our responses will be uh, uh, oscillating around women uh, characters. Then we have embodiment of sacrifice. Now once the two come out in uh, your introduction, then uh, that introduction is considered uh, complete. And therefore I want us to note that these phrases are key in the interpretation of the question and they must be answered in each and every episodic uh, sentence. So every episodic sentence that we make must bring on board, identify the woman and must identify the details of the sacrifice. Now we have a sample introduction for that matter and we are beginning with the link in a doll's house, uh, females go to greater heights for the benefit of others. Up to that point, we have uh, the identification of the word females, which is taking care of the women in the question and the fact that the sacrifice is about going to greater heights for the good of other people. And we can go uh, to the next sentence that will reinforce the first uh, sentence. Uh, for example, Nora chips in to support Helma, a friend for the family. Now this is an example that is in the book and at this stage we consider this introduction valid and therefore it will attract uh, the two marks now that is allocated to it. Now we are going to the body and we want to see uh, some of the women that have sacrificed. At your fingertips we should know some of these women. For instance, uh, Nora is one of them. Uh, for instance, uh, Mrs. Linde is another woman that sacrificed and finally, we have Nora's nurse. Now, uh, for the sake of uh, how to go about such a question, when we have uh, three women characters only in the text, then we'll discuss the first uh, question, uh, the first three points will be on the three uh, women, one each. Then uh, the last point can go to any other woman that has been discussed earlier. Now we are beginning with Nora. Nora does, uh, does a lot of odd jobs to support the family financially when Helma is jobless and sick. Now what, uh, once you make that statement, you stand a chance to get your one point. This is what we call episodic sentence. It identifies the woman, it identifies the sacrifice that the woman has made. Because for Nora to work in this society, uh, men are the ones supposed to provide. And therefore, when the husband is jobless and sick, Nora steps into the husband's shoes and does uh, what the man is supposed to do. Now, the first, uh, the detail is identification of the female character. We have Nora already, and we, uh, the candidate is also expected to bring out the details of how Nora sacrifices. And the following pages are important. 
21, 20, 12, 13, and 19. All these are pages that have different sacrifices that Nora makes, and each one of them uh, stands a chance to give a candidate uh, his uh, full score. Number two, we are talking about Mrs. Linde accepts to marry a uh, Krogstad despite the negativity that is associated with him. Now we have identified that Mrs. Linde is the woman, is the female character that sacrifices, how uh, she sacrifices is already brought out and we want to see the details of this uh, sacrifice. I want us to look at uh, this example and we look at page 88 and uh, 89 and see how to earn uh, fair and full in that question. Now in page 88, uh, uh, knowledge, uh, Mrs. Linde accepts to marry. And he says that, uh, and he says in page 87, that uh, you see it, uh, you uh, the, the second last Linde in page 87, you see it, you like a shipwrecked man clinging uh, to some wreckage uh, and good results to say so. Then Mrs. Linde says, well, I am like a shipwrecked woman clinging to some wreckage. No one to mourn for, no one uh, to care for. Then in page, uh, in page 88, uh, the second Mrs. Linde uh, says, names, how would it be uh, if we two shipwrecked would join forces? So Mrs. Linde makes a suggestion that uh, she wants to uh, be married to Kronstadt. As he further suggests, I could not endure life without work. All my life, as long as I can remember, I have worked and it has been my greatest and only pleasure. But now I am quite alone in the world. My life is so dreadfully empty and I feel forsaken. There is not the least pleasure in working for oneself. Needs, that is the line that is important, give me someone and something to work for. Then uh, Neil uh, Crockstead questions in uh, the last uh, uh, interlocutor in that uh, page 88, and do you know what they uh, think of me here? So Crockstead is already aware, aware that in his image is so much uh, 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 is, is so much low, is lowly rated uh, so much in the society. But now look at the sacrifice uh, again in page 89. I want to be a mother to someone, and your, uh, comma, and your children need a mother. We uh, two need each other. Nils, I have faith in your real character. I can dare anything together with you. So by Nora accepting to identify with a, a clock son whose uh, image is already tarnished, is already a sacrifice. And that is, uh, that is uh, what uh, uh, Mrs. Linde uh, does. Now, the third point is Nora's nurse also sacrifices the welfare of her only daughter to take care of Nora's children. Now, we have seen identification of female character. Nora is already identified and the details of uh, the nurse sacrifice are in page 50. Uh, something that Nora even wonders how uh, uh, the nurse was able to uh, cope without uh, her daughter. Now, the uh, next point is about Nora. Now, remember we are repeating Nora here. That is going uh, to work for us. Nora goes against the societal norms by taking a loan to save Tobert's head. So the character is already identified. We have uh, details of the sacrifice in page 19. We can also read that. Page 19, uh, page 38, and um, page 39. In page 19, there's a discussion between uh, Nora and Mrs. Linde. Mrs. Linde feels that she has, uh, she's proud enough to have accomplished certain uh, tasks for people that are closer to her. For instance, she has seen the death of, uh, she has uh, seen her mother die comfortably. And at the same time, she has also given uh, her uh, younger siblings uh, uh, something to rely on and they can, now they can stand on their own. On the other hand, she feels that Nora has not done much and this is what uh, Nora says. Uh, in page 19, uh, the second Nora, uh, but it was ab absolutely necessary that he should not know. 
my goodness. My goodness, can't you understand that? It was necessary. He should not uh, have no idea what a dangerous condition he was uh, in. It was to me that the doctors came and said that his life was in danger. And that the only thing that, uh, the only thing to save him was to live in the South. So the doctors actually uh, realized that Tobard's health is uh, in uh, a dangerous uh, condition. And therefore the suggestion is that uh, money must be found. He has to travel uh, to uh, uh, South, which is warmer, so that uh, he can get him. So Nora has suggested that they take a loan and all that. And as he says, uh, do you suppose I did not try, first of all, to get what I wanted as if it were, to, uh, it were for myself. I told him how much I should love to travel abroad like other young wife. I tried tears. I tried entries. Um, I, 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 I told him that he ought to remember the condition I was in. He ought to be kind enough and offer some indulgence to me. I even hinted that he might raise a loan. Then uh, Christian, he, was, he said I was thoughtless. He, he said it was his duty as my husband not to indulge in my whims and caprices. So Nora is trying to uh, uh, persuade uh, Tobert to take a loan so that they can travel uh, south for the sake of Tobert's head. But Tobert uh, refuses and therefore Nora tells us that uh, as I believe he called them very well, I thought you must be saved. And that is how I came to devise a way out of the difficulty. So a way out of the difficulty I meant that uh, committing a forgery, uh, falsifying the father's document uh, in order to uh, get a loan uh, from uh, Krogstad. That is what we have in Pink 38 and Pink 39. And Nora is doing all this in a society that does not approve of women uh, actually uh, taking uh, loans without the approval of their husbands or their parents. Now, alternatively, you can go for the fifth point. This is Linden uh, sacrifices allow for Krogstad to marry a rich man whom she does not love for the good of her bedridden mother and siblings. Now, the character is already there uh, in uh, Mrs. Linden. And if you check page 14, then you will see that there's not much she would have done. The last part of Nora, why did you marry him? Then Mrs. Linda says, my mother was alive then and was bedridden and helpless. And I had to provide for my two younger brothers, so I did not think I was justified in refusing his offer. So that is what uh, we, have, uh, we are told. Nora is, uh, Mrs. Linda is telling us that she did not do it because of, uh, out of his uh, love for the man. But she did it because she had a bedridden mother. She did it because she had two uh, younger brothers uh, to take care of. And therefore, it was not out of uh, her liking. So that is another point. Uh, and remember that only uh, four points will be considered for marking. If a candidate uh, marks well and can get the four uh, points straight away, then it is, uh, it will, uh, such a candidate is good to go. But there is no harm in going for the fifth uh, paragraph of the body, uh, so long as the candidate does not stretch the word limit, that is uh, 450 uh, marks. Now, in conclusion, we said the other day that any conclusion must be deliberate. And deliberate means that it must be there. It must be independent. This means that it must be on its own paragraph, and then it must be valid. The whatever statement that comes alongside that uh, conclusive remark must uh, uh, synchronize what question is, uh, the question in, is all about. In conclusion, let us check what we have. Females have always gone out of their way to save members of the society from agony and pain. Now we are looking at the walls of the people, the other characters in the book, and we can see that Tovard, for instance, is saved from agony and pain. To, uh, uh, Krogstad is also saved from this, and therefore this is a valid uh, conclusion. Gentlemen, uh, thank you uh, for that uh, opportunity, this opportunity.